Hi everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Creates, my little space to have a play and an explore and an experiment with lots of different creative techniques and crafts and a little bit of a playtime for me. So you'll normally find me on my embroidery channel, I'll put that up here if you haven't seen that yet. Um, and I do love hand embroidery but I like to explore and try new things as well and things that we can use in the hand embroidery and also art um, and paints and dyes and all that sort of stuff and just see what you can do with it and how maybe these things can come together um, and enhance, enhance your practice if you like. So what I wanted to show you today is a bit of a continuation of what I did in the last two videos. Now if you haven't seen those I will put those up in the corner as well. You can just click up there, they will stay up there for the whole of the video. And that was this little book here. So this was a book I made in 2022. So we've made it um, throughout the year. I did a different page for each month um, and just did a little bit of stitching and made the whole thing into a book. And I've got two videos that cover that, so I won't go over that again, but there was a lot of interest in this. And I am thinking I might do a class based on this, an online class, because um, I thought it'd be a lot of fun and I've got a lot more ideas and people were very interested in it and inspired to have a go at their own. So if you think you might be interested in that sort of thing, do let me know and I can look into that further and maybe I can plan something for us to do together. There was a lot of interest in this book and I had a little look through my collection and I've got quite a few more actually. They're not stitched inside but they are stitched outside so I thought in this video we'd have a little look at embroidered book covers and lots of different ways that you could embroider your own cover. So they are a bit of a random mix of things that I've done at various times and over quite a long period but I thought I'll just pull them all out, I'll go through them and I'll show you what I've done, how I've done it, why I did it in some cases, um, how you can make a very simple book of your own and then how you can continue to explore this, um, this technique. Okay so let's switch to this camera up here and let's have a look at some embroidered book covers. So the first embroidered book cover that I want to show you is this. Now this was made a long, long time ago, way back when um, I first started teaching embroidery in fact. And this was a little class that I did for beginners in goldwork embroidery technique. And you can see my little toadstool sparkling away there. And I'd done this little class a few times I taught this and I thought it's, you know, what can we turn it into? What can I make, make out of this? It's just quite a simple design and I actually stitched it on this pink fabric when use this linen as the backing fabric for it and it's held on with these little buttons and with the stitching through here and then I've cut this pink fabric down just to make this square and I thought it was quite interesting I thought well, I'll make it to a little sketchbook so if I just show you inside quickly these are the pages so a lot of my books take this form this is a concertina sketchbook so the pages are all fastened to the next page like so and they're just folded up so the actual front and back are not attached to each other they're actually loose like so and there's the concertina shape you can see that there like so which is why it's got this little bit of elastic around it to hold it on i'll show you that at the end to hold it together and i'll just show you quickly how i've done that so this is the backing fabric, this is the embroidery fabric. I've wrapped the backing fabric around a piece of card. This is mount board that you would use to frame a piece of work with to make a mount out of, so it's nice and sturdy card. So I've finished this off properly. We do have a video on that. I will link that as well up the corner. So if you want to know how to do that, you can. And then all I've done is folded up my paper, which I'll show you in a minute how to do that, and then just attached it, in fact, if I go that way, and just attached it to this card. Here, just glued it onto the back here so if you're trying to fasten paper to fabric at some point you're going to need to attach something with glue really because I've sewn this up and finished this as a proper piece of embroidery but then I've glued that onto this hard um, this cardboard to finish it off and then attach the paper to the card so that's how that is made so a dead simple book that one I've got quite a few of these in this format but a really nice way to use up a little embroidery that you've done or even if you just done some samples or something you could just put a little sample on there and finish it and turn it into something usable and you could use this for notes or journaling or sketching or painting in anything that you want really but just makes a really nice simple book cover and just uses up those leftover little samples that are hanging around with no home to go to and to keep these two parts together because they're not attached I've just got this piece of pink elastic and I can just put it on the corner just hook it over that corner like that hook that one over there like that and it just holds them together and you can pop that in your bag and you can go sketching 
So I've got another one very similar to that. Again, another sample that I did. This one I wanted to practice painting on the fabric. So this blue is in fact painted on. This is fabric paint painted onto the background fabric. And then I've done the gold work embroidery technique. And again, you can just see that sparkle and shine, really beautiful. And again, it's what do I do with this sampler? It just goes in the drawer and you don't ever see it or actually turn it into something. So again, I've just done that concertina effect. I've got some blue pages in there now and some cream and some brown. So a little mix of different colours there to use. And again, I've just finished that off, mounting that properly around a piece of card, attached it to this card here, glued it to there and then glued my pages to the board. So again, this is a concertina book. Da -da -da, like that. And then for some reason I went with mad <laughs> gold on the back, which is doing weird things with the lighting. But anyway, um, just to match the gold on the front. So really, really nice little way just to finish off that beautiful piece of embroidery. And one more like that. Now I have a whole video on how I made this from start to finish. And when I say from the start, I dyed these fabrics, these, not these fabrics, I dyed these threads with poppy petals that I actually picked out of the video. <laughs> the field. I went foraging for poppy petals. I dyed the threads with them. This dark colour as well is done with comfrey. That gives you a sort of grey greeny colour. And then I designed the poppies from the poppies in the field and I did the embroidery in it and then I did the book and I mounted the book and I go through the entire process in that video. I'm going to link that one at the end of this so you can see that one from start to finish and that gives you a really in-depth look at how I did it because again exactly the same way. It's concertina book there and these paper is watercolour paper so I can do watercolour paintings in here if I want to. It's a nice good quality paper in here. You can put whatever paper you want in line paper and have a little notebook. You could make a dress book, you could make a bullet journal, anything that you like out of this but these are so simple to make. You can put as many pages in as you want as well and then just glue the cover on the back as well. So that is my poppy inspired little sketchbook. So I'm going to show you these two together because these are related. So I led a textile tour in India into Jaipur and we did a little bit teaching on that from the hotel by the swimming pool, the most beautiful classroom I've ever had. And um, we wanted to do some little um, little pieces of embroidery and I wanted to concentrate on shisha mirrors. I thought we are in the land of the shisha mirror. We need to learn how to do shisha mirrors. And we just made these little samples here and I just thought so nice to turn them into a little book as well and again just the concertina one and what's great about this is this is cardi paper so this is cotton paper watercolour paper and this comes from India they make this in India this cardi paper so I thought well what's better than a little sketchbook made out of cardi paper with a little bit of Indian inspired embroidery on the front so this is felt that I've used here it's quite a thick felt couple of millimetres thick there and that means you just don't have to finish off any edges or anything like that. I love working on felt, there's no seams to make or fraying going on or anything like that. So we just had these little squares, did a little bit of stitching on it and then again I've just made my concertina pages like so and then I just glued that straight on the felt straight onto one of those pages. I haven't finished that off in any way. That's literally the piece of felt that I stitched on stuck to the book pages. Now just need to think about what you do on the back. If you've got any lumpy bits of embroidery or threads on the back or knots or anything like that, it's quite hard to have this smooth back. So you need a nice finish on the back. So just make sure you're finishing your threads off nicely. And that makes a really, really beautiful little book. And then on the back, I just stuck a piece of the pink felt as well. I don't mind that these edges are showing all the way around this nice little decal edge. This paper has a really nice finish to the edge like that. I really like it. It's all part of it. So I quite like that it's showing outside the embroidery. So that's one we did. This was another one I did in a class for shisha mirrors. So again, the same felt. You can see a bit more clearly how thick that felt is. For this one and I've done some square mirrors just a little bit of plain embroidery on that and again there's my concertina one this is just cartridge paper so I could draw on that be good shopping list book that one and don't forget because it's concertina one you can turn over and keep going on the back as well and then I just put some nice paper on the back of here over the edge here and just trapped a ribbon inside that so that goes underneath this piece of paper between that and the card there and just made that little cut out 
there. I've got one on this side too. That just comes underneath the card fixed into there. So when I do that up, I can just wrap that around like so. Tie it off and hold it together. So if you want to make concertina books, you probably will just need to hold them together so that they don't flop over. And if you drop it on the floor and you're only holding the top, <laughs> the whole thing comes unfolded. So just something to tie it up with. I just wanted to show you this one because this is not so much a book cover, but it's a needle case cover. So I just wanted to show you something that was soft that you don't have to wrap around cardboard. Those ones have got structure to them um, because I want to draw in them. And as with my little stitch book here, this one has got structure as well. The pages were quite delicate if you've seen that video and I didn't want them flopping around or squashing. So I made this with card in it so it could hold its shape and look after the embroideries. But this is a little example here of what you can do. This is just a little sampler of beading beads and stitches so I was doing a video and I was trying them out and thought oh that's come out quite nicely actually <laughs> I quite like that so I just finished the stitches off properly got rid of all the ends did a little running stitch around it and I've actually finished this one properly in inverted commas so I just put a piece of felt as a lining for it and I folded the edges in I've mitered the corner so like you would a present there so it comes across the corner folded those edges under and just slip stitched all the way around it just to make a nice neat edging with it. If you're good with sewing machines and construction and dressmaking, there'll be lots of different ways you can put these covers together um, and make seams and you can bag things out and make it all look professional, nice and neat and tidy. But I just did this by hand. This is just hand stitched and very easy to do. You don't need a sewing machine for this. Just put a little fold of felt in the middle for my book to put my needles in and then just two little bits of ribbon coming out of the fabric to tie it up with. So you could easily replace that with paper if you wanted to. You could make a little a signature of papers and just sew it down there. I've sewn that to the felt and then put the felt in so it doesn't come through to the back. So you could easily replace that with um, paper or you could just put fabric leaves in it and sew some little samples to your fabric leaves. So a really great way to finish off samples. Don't chuck those samples away. Go and have a route through. See what you've got that you've had a little play with that didn't maybe work that you could cut up and you can make a little book cover out of. Now if you're a follower of my embroidery channel you will be familiar with this one. I made this one very recently, a slow stitching video. It had a bit of a mad week and I just wanted to slow it down and do something that didn't require too much brain power and this is a great technique for that. I love this technique and I go through how to make this from start to finish in that so do check that video out if you're interested in this. But I just made a little book cover out of this. It's got a little bookmark in it with a little bead on the end and I just sometimes collect these little things. It's beautiful bead. It's really heavy. I've only got one of them. And I just thought that went really nicely with the sort of effect of the front as well. Just attached it to a little bit of silk, tied it to the top of the book cover, and that's my little bookmark. And then if I just take it out of here, just show you briefly how I made that. So it's just a rectangle of fabric. I've done my slow stitch on it. You can see the stitching here come through the inside. So I'm not worried about lining it or bagging it out or nice neat seams or anything like that. Slow stitching is about the the process that you go through about the mindful act of these fabrics and feeling the fabrics and feeling the threads in your hand and it's really is lovely to have that interaction with it and I just folded the both ends in stitched it along here and along here um, this is stitched along here but that's part of my stitching on the front let me show you the other side and these fabrics by the way I have dyed with tea and rusty nails I have a video on that on this channel um, check that one out if you're interested in this fabric. Really, really lovely fabric to make, really rewarding to make it and dead easy. That's why you just need a bit of patience <laughs> with it because the secret is letting it dry naturally to get these beautiful effects on the fabric. Really amazing. And I used those fabrics in this because I promised I was going to make something out of it and I had these wonderful little African buttons here that I put on. So that's the outside, that's the inside. This is a bought book that's gone in the middle here. This is just a little sketchbook I had, sea white one. It's got some nice, good quality paper in it. I can draw or I can sketch or I can paint in that. And then that just slips inside there like so. Just make sure you leave enough on the top and the bottom just to sew down here. 
and that goes in that side there just slips in and you can change it if you filled that book up and you wanted to do another you can keep the book cover change the book and away you go again and there's my little bookmark down the middle and I've got two fastenings on here just to fasten that up with so again do check that video out if you're interested in how to make that slow stitching is a lot of fun and these book covers are so easy to make and just think of all those things you've got lying around that you might have a little journal that you want covering or a sketchbook you've done some paintings in or a little book of ideas anything that covers a bit boring slow stitch cover super super fun now this is one that nobody has seen yet because I've only just finished this and I'm excited to show you this. So this is based on that one that I've just shown you. It's another slow stitch cover and I've gone to town on this one. <laughs> really enjoyed it so I'm going to um, do this. So this is some silk. I'll show you this in a minute. Show you the cover first. So I just started with a plain piece of fabric. In fact if I show you the book inside first make a bit more sense that noise <laughs> I'm going to show you what that noise is in a second and this was a sketchbook I had and I was doing some just messing around with some abstract painting in my art lesson my art group that I go to every week and I just thought oh, I'm going to do something big and bold and I actually took the book apart and I painted all these pages and I sewed the book back together again where's the middle gone there's the middle so I sewed it back together again just a simple stitch down the center there and I tore all the edges to give it that decal look like we had on that cardi paper earlier and put the book back together now the book has actually got a black cover really uninspiring and I covered the inside with some parchment paper so that you can't see that black I didn't want it to be black and again I've made this in the same way as that previous one so I've just folded in the ends stitched along the top just here and here in a back stitch and then the cover just slips inside so if I just take the book out like so there's my book it's a lot of fun to do that I did it really quickly I think I'm going to go back in and draw on it and actually one of them I've got some stitching on it where's my stitching oh I can't remember there just started a little bit of stitching on it really excited to sort of put some stitching in and some drawing on here and see if we can't make a nice big piece of art out of embroidery and painting on paper so I'm looking forward to having a play with that so I'm going to do more work on that but I just want to show you this cover so the inside is just a piece of calico so it was that size plus the ends on either end all folded out one big flat piece of fabric and let's just show you this side and just piece these fabrics on top so exactly the same as I've done that previous one so do check that video out and my other video on slow stitching as well that gives a lot more detail about the technique and covered the whole piece of calico in just different pieces so a little bit like crazy quilting type technique and I've got some silks in here this is silk here this is silk that you make men's ties out of this is that fabric that I dyed with the nails and the tea a little bit of lace there um, just some green fabric I just wanted to bring out a little bit of a brighter colour and this lace here I actually found this piece um, while I was <laughs> doing a little bit of maintenance in the studio I found this little bit of lace I'll put a picture up of that because it was really beautiful and I obviously bought it I don't remember buying it but it's um saving it for the right occasion this was the right occasion so this is a little black piece of lace here you can see some black leaves on it and all these flowers were already sewn onto it these green ones have disintegrated a bit because they're right on the spine so something to think about is how delicate your fabric is and I've sewn it down with these little green cross stitches so sewn that over these other layers of fabric there's a little bit more of that tea dyed one down here a little bit of velvet with some gold on it um, running stitches to hold it all together the cross stitches I found this lovely little bit of braid as well this ribbon braid which I showed in, in a video um, that I did for my patrons and my channel members on my embroidery channel I said oh I'm going to use this for something and I've actually put it across the top I think that's really really beautiful and then I've just decorated it with some stuff so I just found these little kind of steampunky type shapes here um, this has been hanging around for ages this little sort of cabochon type thing I thought that looks like a little clasp and I had to, to drill some holes in it to get it to 
to stitch to be able to stitch on it but the bit I really want to show you the two bits I really want to show you are is this let's start with this this is a little bag a little Indian bag I don't need to undo it's got nothing in it but it's a bag and I've had this hanging around for a while I just thought oh I could sew it on the cover that would be really great and again I bought in a little bit of this ribbon from up here down to here just to tie it in together you can sort of see how I've done that in a couple of places this color is from here you know the green the green and the green and the green and the little green cross stitches come throughout so although it looks like everything's going on there there is a little bit of a system to it and just to tie the whole thing together and get these colors to match as well here's the orange of the orange of the bag here and you could just put little trinkets in there you could put a little note in there when you made it and who made it it's quite nice to sign these things we don't tend to sign them as as textile artists and embroiderers for some reason um, so sign and date it and then I just want to show you the last thing I did I'm gonna to have to hold it up for this so if you have doing some slow stitch or any kind of embroidery quilting or anything like that if you've got broken jewelry odd earrings I hope you can see that on there that's a little earring I had and I really like these earrings and I lost one of them <laughs> so I've just taken it apart taken the little ear hanging off and I've sewn it on and it actually dangles can't really see it because I can't hold it upright but it dangles I've just sewn it at the top so it's actually kind of loose and it just hangs off and it's a little shimmer and then there was another one here as well that's another odd earring that I had so I've taken the top off I've sewn it down here and when I just hold this bag up it just dangles and shines really really beautiful way to use up your broken jaw and you think I've obviously held on to these for years and you think oh what am I going to use that for and this is really nice to put that on and again put the orange colours in as well obviously that's quite delicate this bit's quite delicate on the spine so this one's not going to get a lot of use if I work in the book cover I should probably take the book out and leave the cover somewhere safe and then put the book back in when I've finished and then I'm just going to show you this here this is another thing I found on the same day as <laughs> so I found that bit of lace. So I folded the ends in, just decorated it with some stitch and kept that quite plain. My book fits inside there. I'm just going to lean behind me because I found this really wonderful skein <laughs> of silk. This is old silk saris. They've been cut up and they've been stitched together in long strips and I've just got this great big hank of of silk sari and I was going to make a tassel out of it that'd be great for a tassel and then I just found it the other day and thought oh you know what that would look wonderful on my book I've got enough of it to play with there's just some beautiful beautiful fabrics it's just gorgeous in there and I just picked a little bit that I thought would match I'm going to colour that Whoa. so I just picked this little bit here this was sewn together already and it's quite a long bit but I wanted all these colours in it look at that purple to that turquoise really amazing and I just thought it kind of went with the with the front really that little bit of turquoise is coming out in there and I've got some of the pinks pinks in here and then I just fasten them both to there now you could fasten one end to there and wrap it around and tie it you could do whatever you like with that and I've just doubled it up like so and I'm just wrapping that around the whole book so if I slip the book back inside you can see what that looks like that goes in there that side goes in there can't get it in just bend the book in half the other way that will go in and then that just gets wrapped around there like so just catch that jewelry down with it and that binding will just keep that in place and then all I did with this was just wrap it around there a few times keep it all nice and protected really pleased with this loved the feeling of it loved all these different materials and just being able to touch it and feel it and make this beautiful book cover out of it so what I thought I would do is just show you how to make the pages they're dead easy how to make one of these little concertina books and then you can make your embroidery and you can cover it in any way that you want to so you just need some paper of your choice you can have plain paper to, to write on you can have line paper if you want a notebook you can have watercolor paper if you want to paint in it anything goes you can mix your pages as well if you want to um, the only thing I would say is 
probably make the book the size of the paper. Choose your paper first, see what size pages it makes and then make the book to fit that. It's quite hard to make paper fit a particular size without wasting loads of it. So I've just got some square ones here. This was some old letterhead paper, cut the letterhead off the top because the paper was really nice. Just need some scissors or a ruler and a knife, whichever you want to do. And I've just folded that in half. So you need long bits and we're going to concertina them up. So all I'm going to do is cut that in half. So, so you've got a kind of a long piece. If you've got an A4 piece of paper in the US, if you're letter size, you cut it long ways, you will get the same thing. Get a bit bigger than that, sort of a size, I suppose, that kind of a size. So you can cut that into three and fold it that way. So just have a little bit of play with your paper, see what size book it makes. But I just found with this one, if I just fold it in half, and then to concertina it, you need to fold the opposite way. So I folded my sheet in half like so. I'm going to fold that back out to the outside. Now fold it as neatly as you can, because the more you put together, those little errors will pick up and it won't fit properly. So you can see that concertina, so that folds that way. So this one needs to fold outwards. If you fold it the wrong way, it doesn't matter. Just turn it over and recrease it. And you get like a little W shape. Or an M, <laughs> depending which way up you are in the world. And then all you need to do is make a few of those. So fold your next one as well, make a load of those pieces of paper. And I found the best way to join these is actually to overlap the sheets. So you could just stick that one directly on top of there like that, but make sure you get your folds in the right direction. You want them to go alternate, alternately. So if I put that one in there like that and stick that together like so, when it folds up, it's still folding in the right direction. So I'm just hooking it just inside like that. And then you can do that with your next one as well. So you're going to need to turn your paper the opposite way up. So that one's an M, if you like. I'm just going to go in there like that. That one is a W and that's going to go in there like that. And you can just put all your pages together. You can glue those together, whatever glue you like, paper glue, PVA, white craft glue. Let's just put that last one on. Stick them all together. Don't do that as neatly as you can so you get a nice even set of pages. And those are your concertina pages and you just need to fix something to the top and the bottom so you can get a couple of pieces of card now you can cover this card either in paper and then use that to slip inside your book cover or you can cover them in fabric as well. Just do something to decorate them basically and then all I would do is open up that first single sheet there, put that on in the middle and glue that down to the board. And what you need to make sure you do, these will obviously all be fastened together, is you need to get that on straight so it's not, it doesn't end up looking like that. So I suggest you put the glue on the paper then you put the cover on top, you match it with the one below, you squeeze them together nice and tightly so that everything lines up really nicely, the pages aren't sticking out and then you have got your concertina book and then you can think about making your cover for it. If you want to make the other one, so like this last one I showed you with a little sketchbook all you have to do is fold your pages in half, you put them together, creases together in the middle and then you can sew down the centre here and then you've just got a normal book and then you can slip that inside your book cover, that side, that inside the other side and that just makes your simple book cover. So this method if you want to, this method if you want to make a little piece that goes on top like that that's that method and this one is my slow stitch book cover method where I slip the pages inside the book. So once you've had a go at a couple of these techniques these are super nice to make these books you can just let your imagination run wild 
can make sketchbooks and notebooks and journals and bullet journals and diaries and all sorts of different kinds of books. Just have fun experimenting and playing and seeing what you can come up with. So I hope you enjoyed that little tour around some of my book covers just very quickly but I just wanted you to see that just with a little bit of playing and experimentation all these different things that you can come up with you don't have to know about book binding um, you don't have to have a sewing machine to make these beautiful things you can just have a play and come up with them and I just want to show you this one because you couldn't see it when it was down on the surface I want to show you the, <laughs> the jewellery sparkling so there's that little earring there look and there's another earring I don't know where the other earrings have gone. If they ever show up, I can either take these off and wear them again, or I can just put them on another piece. It's a really wonderful way to use that broken jewellery. Really, really a lot of fun um, playing with that one. So thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this and been inspired to go and make a little book cover of your own. Do give it a thumbs up if you have. Go and check out this video up here. This is how I tea dyed my fabrics to make my slow stitch book with. So go and have a look at that one. A lot of fun to do that. Um, and I will see you in the next video.